All right, let's uh, let's let's dial, yeah, dial get, it, get off the alcohol. Yeah, topic. Get off the alcohol and the Call of Duty. Let's let's go back to your early early. Oh, we're early. starting at the beginning. Yeah, we just want to hear how I got involved in all this crap in, in esports. Yeah, I get asked this a lot. Now that we have time, I'll, I'm down to have a little story time because this so, is actually people always ask me how to get involved in this stuff. And dude, there's just I always say like, yeah, there's some talent, but there's also a lot of luck with a lot of stuff. So we can go all the way back to the very beginning. So I. Uh, my first game where I sort of started to get in, interested in esports was Halo C, like the first Halo. Parents got me an Xbox. Ooh, I thought it was cool, and I would just kick the shit out of everyone at our high school. We would like senior year. We were we were skipping half the day to go to my buddy's house. We'd have this before Xbox Live, really. So we'd have, we'd have four Xboxes down there, like eight to sixteen of us, and I was just I was God. I was just I was the best player in my high school by a mile. And I thought it was so cool, so I started watching videos of the ogres and stuff. And uh, where in New Jersey you say you grew up? Ah, uh, Pennsylvania. 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 So um, I think it was. If you would have said Ohio, I would have, I would have fucking shit a brick. Well, that's well, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and like Virginia. Like there were a lot of us that would play together. It's like that Northeast hub is where a lot of this stuff kicked off for Halo. Um, so it was actually I think it was my freshman year of college. I was going to school in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and uh, there was a local at a mall. I show up to the local thinking I'm just going to destroy everyone. And uh, a girl kicks my ass. And at the time, I'm like, what is going on? She had to have been 12. I'm like, what is, <laughs> what is going on? So I didn't know who they were at the time, but it ended up being Xena, which yeah. many of you don't know. But Xena is basically Xena. Well, her name's Bonnie. Bonnie Burton. Bonnie Burton yeah. uh, her brother, Johnny, and Jeff. They played on a team called MOB. John, uh, MOD. Johnny was the best player. He was an STK, which was like the Ogres. It was STK. They were like the best team at the time back in Halo. Uh, they lived in Pennsylvania. Found out. I basically went up and talked to them afterwards, found out they lived 10 minutes from me. For, so from there on out, whenever I was home, I was in their basement, and we were grinding. Then it elevated into me being like, uh, you know, the kind of the best at my college. I, I literally would go to parties, and people would know I was the Halo guy, and yeah. they'd ask to play one-on-one, and I'd just smoke them. Like, not even kidding. I'd be yeah. going out to party, and people would be like, oh, you're the Halo guy. That's actually where Maven came from, because it means to be skilled in something. And someone called me the Maven of Halo. I was like, ah, I like that. Um, so that's not your middle name? No, my middle name's Forrest. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, so anyway. Could have um, done without that. Back then, though, with all this going on, I started going to, <laughs> we went to some Halo tournaments. My first MLG tournament was back in 2004, Seattle. So that's, what, 14, 15 years ago now, my first MLG event. So I met Sundance and Puckett and Sepso, uh, Shibby, like all those guys I was, you know, friends with, well, back then, and Adam, uh, less friends, and I was kind of just an annoying dick bag back then because I was just a young like, high school slash college kid, all yeah. of these things. Um but met all those guys and knew them. And then I think it was around, I actually went, once I, like later in college, I sort of put that stuff to the side. I stopped going to events after, after Halo 2, um, stopped going to stuff, just finished my degree. And it, I didn't get involved in anything until Halo 4. So that's like 2012. So like a lot of years go by where I was just off the scene, didn't really follow esports much. Um, and it was Gandhi, Scott Lucier. He was, Scott uh, Lucier. He was a Halo pro. Friend of mine back in the day, because we used to drive to you know Virginia to play against him and Quake and Defy and all of those guys back then. Um, and I knew Gandhi. I actually got well. I gave Gandhi his first beer. Uh, I shouldn't say that because he was well. He was probably fifteen. So could we might. Um, yeah, so that was a long time ago. <laughs> don't don't cut that. Yeah. So I uh, got, I was friends with Gandhi when I was probably like I think I was like twenty twenty one. He was he was fifteen and uh, we just we played Halo against each other. And how old, wait? How old is he? Thirty. He's, I think he's five year, five or six years younger than me. So if I'm 33, he's 27, 28 now. Really? I thought you guys were the same age. No, no. He's I just, not aging well. I just, <laughs> I so just I, I knew him from back in the day, and he <laughs> hits me up when Halo Four comes out. He's like, "Yo, do you want to do you want to stream together?" And I was like, "Sure." Yeah. I'm like whatever. All right, I'm down. So we started playing Halo Four together, and uh, people thought we were funny. Um, ultimately, they asked us to cast like an AGL event. And we were, I, at the time, I remember I was terrified because, like, I, Walshy was like, God, he was like an idol of mine. I'd met him before, but yeah. he was like my hero in esports. And I ended up casting my first thing with Walshy. And I think it was Ghost and Scott. And uh, yeah, that was a rough time because I was, dude, I was living on Scott's couch. I had no job. They weren't paying us to commentate. I ended up going like $20,000 in debt on a credit card. I mean, I went a good year, year and a half just not being paid a dime doing this stuff. And, that was a hole it took a while to dig out of, but it paid off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But that's how I got my foot in the door, and then ultimately just sort of transferred over to Cobb once I didn't, you know, could kind of see Halo wasn't going anywhere. And Why do you think that happened? Why do you think that, like, it, you, you were obviously there from the beginning, 
uh, and then you saw it all. You saw the, the whole history. You, did you ever compete professionally, or were you just? Uh, yeah, I mean, I went to. I competed in four or five events. Got anywhere from top eight to top sixteen. Okay. But that's back when you know Halo One. There were fifty to what eighty. Some teams. of your teams. Uh, the only people that I, they wouldn't know any of them. No one would know any of those guys. But I mean, Grasshopper and JMB. JMB was the guy. That's Johnny Burton. He was an SDK. I teamed with him a couple times. Breeze from SDK. Um, uh, Seven Vash. I, I don't know if any of these names are so old. No one's yeah. gonna remember these. But I went to some Halo One tournaments with them. Some Halo Two events. Um, if you were to say the best Halo player ever to this day, ever. Ogre Two. I mean, I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't think it's really a debate. I know a lot of people have been talking about Lethal lately with like his performance in Halo Five, but for me, it's Tuger. Like, yeah. He, he was. Yeah. Nasty. The guy. The guy was old. The guy was competing just until he was like eighty. Yeah, like he's, he's still, that's crazy. He still <laughs> he ages like it, he's, he's like um, yeah, it's it's too good without question. Yeah, right? um, Tom, Tom the bomb. Yeah, I remember back when God, I was I had them both added on AOL Instant Messenger. I remember it was Tom the bomb and Dan the man, and some numbers afterwards. Yeah, they, they were my heroes back then. I remember the first tournament I showed up to, man. Like I was just so nervous. Like I I just want to meet the ogres. And yeah. like the, one of the first things I don't remember how. But I got to play a 2v2. It was me and Ogre 2 versus Pocket and Ogre 1. And oh my god, I was so nervous. I was shaking. Was uh, Pocket good? Uh, he was all right. I mean, he was, he was, he was. I guess, like me in a way. Like, we were both could shoot well. And yeah, we yeah. were decent players. But yeah. we were like the practice noobs of the really good players. Like, yeah. we, like we would destroy average people. Yeah. But not, to, not at that level, no. no. Um, but yeah, and it cost, it, but, but why, why do I think that happened? With regards to Halo? Um, hmm. It's funny because I see a lot of people that are like, oh man, if they just kept it the same old Halo, people would people would love it. Hey, you're insane. If they came out with a Halo, the same movement and stuff as Halo 2 or Halo 1, no one's playing it now. Yeah. I just think it's, uh, uh, I think part of it was probably Call of Duty. Just uh, how big Call of Duty became. Mm-hmm. Uh, sort of like you're seeing it to a degree now. Like I don't think it's quite the same because it's not going to be an annual release and there are different titles, but you saw... Fortnite, the juggernaut, yeah. how it was, how it's affected COD. Just if you talk about yeah. streaming numbers, like there's there's no argument in that. Like, yeah. Fortnite's had an impact on every single title. Of course. Um, but I think at the time, like when COD blew up, COD was so big, and Halo was going in a direction just title wise that some people didn't love, and people just started to slowly shift. Yeah, I think it was a combination of things. As far as the esports thing go, I don't think it was anything with the esport as much as just I think people just didn't want to play Halo anymore. Yeah, I think that's for me that's the biggest part of it. Oh, yeah. People I, didn't love Reach. They didn't love Halo 4. Yeah, I, I, I personally blamed some of the blame. I put the blame on some of the players. Or the well, bomb. you mean just the constant complaining and bashing and whining? and That and, and just the lack of, of, of help. Oh, yeah. You know? well, you the, see well, no, the, the reason I said it is because, you know, Call of Duty, I don't know who... I, I, you know how you if you, could, if you could hit a button and view the alternate reality if, had you not made a certain you know, decision or, or move... Um, I always want to know what would have happened if we just, you know, if we never, if if Optic and anybody else didn't put that much focus on content creators and said, like, if I came into the space as a fresh face into esports and said, no, you don't just play, you have to create content yeah. too. It could it could have helped, but I still think like the single people ask me like all the time like why, you know, why one cod like especially internally like one why one cod gets watched more than another, why viewership goes up and down like. Yes, content creation helps, and there are a lot of things you can do, but at the core of it, like if people aren't playing the game, it's, it's tough for an eSport to, to have success. Yeah. I mean, yes, there are some games where the, the viewer numbers in the eSport far dwarf the player numbers, but they're still very popular games. Like, When yeah. was the last time you saw an eSport that was a juggernaut that wasn't a popular game? Never. No, it's just not a thing. Yeah. So I think it was just like Halo's popularity just as a title kind of tapered off and esports sort of went with it. That's how I view it. And, and I'm sure there's a lot. Dude, you know as well as I do. Typically when something falls apart, there are a million little things that combine yeah. to make it happen. It's same with someone blowing up. Like you saw Ninja blow up or TV Star. It's a million little things that usually lead to a bigger picture. But yeah. the single biggest thing, like I, people weren't playing Halo. Yeah. <laughs> they just weren't. Like COD blew up and 